Um, so I will talk about uh, AFM and desktop data processing. And uh, so far, everything was a bit abstract and uh, theoretical, so I thought uh, we'd just do it live. Um, and actually, uh, this is not the first time uh, that we're doing such a, a video tutorial, uh, but there's a really long, uh, full version uh, on our website, uh, which is uh, a few hours, but it's, I mean, you can speed it up in the boring parts, you can stop it in the uh, difficult parts, and really follow along. So on the website, you can uh, download uh, some test data, so you will get exactly the same data that's in the webinar, um, and hopefully get to the same result. Uh, so my initial idea was I, I take this uh, webinar, I make a short version of, of this here, um, but I realized it's not really useful because you can just watch it here. Uh, and also, uh, Martin has made uh, much more beautiful looking slides than me. Uh, so I deleted all my slides and I took the ones from Martin. The goal of this session is um, the steps that he mentioned uh, we do now in, in Gwydion, even though uh, Martin said we shouldn't do it. Uh, the school is not only for teaching, it's also for discussing, right? So we can discuss why Gwydion is good in some cases, why it's not so good in other cases. So the first uh, um, yeah, problem that we can encounter are these uh, face jumps that we see here on the left side. Um, and as uh, Martin explained, this is uh, just a problem of displaying the data. Uh, whenever the face uh, seems to be smaller than uh, one pi, it will uh, jump up to one pi and continue here. Uh, and in the image, it looks like this. And then uh, the reason uh, you correct it, uh, you need a substrate uh, in every uh, line of the image, and then you can uh, subtract a plane. And you can write now uh, a code in, in MATLAB to do this, or I have um, brought the data example here. Maybe I plot first uh, topography so you know what this data looks like. It should open very soon. Yeah, there it is. So we have here a topography image, and it's just a, a white square. This is a silicon dioxide square on the silicon substrate. Um, so this is a sample that we're looking at. Uh, and we're looking at the optical phase. So in this, uh, in this example, I know that if we plot here, it's in a different color scale, uh, we can see there's a really strong contrast and it's a really abrupt so if we make a line profile from the blue area to the red, uh, we can oh, cool. uh, we can re really see that uh, we have a super sharp jump here. Uh, it's from roughly minus 2 to plus 3. Uh, that's around 2 pi. And uh, this is how you can identify there's uh, something artificial going on. And the reason you can correct this in Gridion uh, and this is uh, for the people from the Iveska Summer School. I found a better way to do it. Um, actually, somebody in the webinar found a better way. I just copied it. Um, which is here this wrap value function. We click it. We say our face uh, is jumping between uh, in, in an interval of 2 pi. Uh, we hit OK, and we're done. So, uh, and this shows now why I like to use Gwydion, because this was very easy, and everybody can do it. Uh, the reason why Martin doesn't want to do it is that it's a bit dangerous um, because this will remove every 2-pi jump. Uh, and in the, here we were lucky, there was only one, uh, one jump, so it's very easy to correct. But if there's multiple ones, then maybe the, this algorithm is doing something strange. And um, it's not Gwydion's responsibility to take care of this. It's, uh, it's your responsibility. Um, so, and also, if I say now you can click this button, uh, I'm also not responsible. You, you have to always double check. <laughs> you have to always uh, double check. Um, and the way I would double check it here is, uh, again, with the line profile. Uh, you can see it's a relatively smooth transition now. Maybe compare with literature, what do you expect? How high should this contrast be? Uh, and if this is all uh, agreeing with each other, I think you're, then it's okay to do this. Okay, so this was already the first example. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask at any time. Otherwise, I will just continue with the next uh, point. And this is how to correct for phase drift. And uh, so here, 
uh, the image, there's not really a, a strong drift, but if we zoom in to the substrate, we can see something like this. Yeah, so it's, it's not homogeneous. And now what we can do, uh, and I realized in the webinar it's, a, it's not done in an ideal way, um, you can just uh, remove a, a background from this image. And I want to remove just a, a plane in the vertical direction, so the, the slow scanning axis. Um, and this is done, again, uh, with two mouse clicks. We can subtract this. Uh, we have to readjust the color scale here. Uh, but what we can see, this already, it does not yield a, a good result. So even though the function is there, we have to pay attention. Um, in this case, we are averaging over the whole image, and we are flattening a plane onto the whole image. So this is why we have to be a bit more careful. And this is what I like a lot about Gwilion. Um, you can just draw on the image which areas you want to use to um, fit this plane. So you can really just draw anywhere. Like this, you can draw. Um, if you want to code this green area in, uh, in MATLAB, it's a bit more difficult. Um, and then you can make it arbitrarily complicated. If you look closely, there's a lot of dirt on the, on the substrate. Do you want to include this uh, in your uh, fit, or do you want to exclude this? In Gwydion, it's very easy to exclude this. To program, it's harder. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, so now this is flat. Um, So this is what you can do uh, with, with Gwydion. Um, let's go to the next phase, how to normalize images. Uh, and here it starts to become a, lit, a little bit uh, tricky with uh, Gwydion, because uh, what Martin said, you, you should always normalize, or you should generally calculate with complex values, uh, which is not possible in Gwydion. Uh, here we get luckily along, uh, we can circumvent this because if you write down the, uh, the expressions you find to normalize, you just have to divide the amplitudes and you have to subtract the phases. So it's all real values. In this case, we can still do it with Gwydion. Um, so let's do this. Uh, we can check maybe, we can open the, the amplitude of this. Yeah, here's the uh, amplitude, and we can see already from the uh, scale bar the values, um, it's, it's some strange numbers where we don't know what they mean. What does an amplitude of 0 0.2 mean? It's unclear. Um, so that's why we can again uh, select an area, or maybe we can, we can zoom into the uh, substrate here, here the substrate. Uh, if we look closer, uh, the substrate is also not homogeneous in this case. So we have some, uh, some brighter areas like down here and some darker areas like down here. Uh, now the question is which of these areas do you reference to? And um, I also don't have the answer, which is why we just average over all of this. Sorry. We just average over all of this. Uh, we want to know what is the, the mean value of this uh, silicon substrate, um, which is yeah, 0 0.19. We can uh, remember this value for later and just divide the whole image uh, divided by this value. Uh, I know it's very fast, so I click the buttons. Um, the slow version is, is on the webinar. Um, so this is now just divided every pixel of the image by the average value of the silicon. And now what we can see is uh, the values here are around uh, one on the substrate. We can even make a line profile. Let's do it like this. Where we can see ah, it's roughly one on the silicon. This is because I averaged. There's also dirt on the, on the surface. This is included. Um, yeah. So now we can say um, on the silicon dioxide, the amplitude is 0 0.7 times that of silicon. So this now has a physical meaning. 
This is why we this is why we normalize this. And in uh, in Gridion, yeah, it, it was easy. We can do the same uh, with the face. I think I I will uh, skip this because there then uh, finally what you what you will have to do instead of dividing by the reference value, you subtract by the reference uh, subtract the reference value. Okay. So this is normalized. Has now a physical meaning, and uh, yeah, we managed to circumvent the complex number problem. And now, uh, this was the last part, and actually, uh, this is something that applies mostly for uh, plasmonics and for, for field mapping, for lattitons. And this is something that I actually didn't work so much with, that's why I, I did, didn't really pay attention to it, but I noticed from Martin's talk it's really important, and it's uh, really a limitation of Gwydion. Um, sometimes you want to subtract a complex number from your optical images. And, uh, I don't know an easy way of doing it in, in Gridion. So for this type of um, data, I think you, you should use something else. Um, at least if you want to subtract uh, here this, this complex uh, background. And now you can see uh, I'm already at the end of all these uh, slides. Uh, my, what I want to uh, show is not much longer, it's only this uh, uh, one slide here, um, where I just um, compare uh, different ways of processing data. So I talked now a lot about the uh, Gwydion. It's free, it's easy to use, um, many functions are there, okay? I didn't show that many, uh, like statistical analysis, uh, different things. Um, what I like a lot, and I think it's very helpful, is to work with the masks just by drawing on the image to include or exclude certain areas. Um, these are the, the pros of Gwydion, but the, uh, we cannot use real valued numbers, which uh, I understand for, for some samples is a, is a problem. Um, in yellow it's written, uh, Gwydion can be used for batch processing of a lot of images, and also uh, it can be done in an automatic way if you use Python. <laughs> so you kind of, it's not really user-friendly anymore. Uh, and on the other side you have, um, yeah, you have MATLAB, you have open source uh, versions, and there are also free uh, versions available, but um, it's not so easy to use. You have to write your own code. Um, you have access to a lot of databases, which is great, but you have to implement them or, or install them, which is not great. Um, for the masks, how to draw them, I'm not sure how, how you do that. Some, some programs can probably do this, uh, but we can work with complex valued numbers, and uh, automation is easy if you already have the script. And now, I think, conclusion of this uh, comparison is um, there's, I don't know of a of software uh, which can combine all the green uh, points, um, but maybe there is one. Um, if one of you knows uh, a software that's easy to use as Gwydion, but also has complex valued numbers, uh, then please share, and uh, yeah, I, will, I can have a look. And then maybe the next uh, tutorial is on, on, a, on a different software. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for the Polaritons, I mean, it uh, would be good to have such a, such a software. Uh, I'm just not aware of, of any. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, and with this, I'm already at the end. Uh, this is the summary slide. Then thank you, Martin, for the slides. <laughs> <And> <laughs> Thank you, Lars. Are there any questions? Yes. Hi. Uh, so my question is: You choose, uh, uh, you know, to remove your polynomial background. You choose vertical and of the order of one. Mm -hmm. So any specific? How do you choose? Like we should choose order one or two, one or three or five. Uh, so what is the criteria? Um, so the way I learned is: you don't do any pro uh, post processing on your data <laughs> unless you have a reason, mm -hmm. and you can explain why. Uh, and the goal is to do as little as possible, as little as needed. And f uh, for this uh, slow scanning direction, we know uh, it can take 10, 10 minutes, 20 minutes for an image. Uh, interferometer will drift. You have this gradient in that direction. Mm -hmm. And I assume this is a minimal 
processing, I just assume it's a linear drift. And I see if this is enough. In some cases, uh, maybe you have a longer measurement, it's not linear anymore. Uh, maybe you have to use higher order polynomials. Yeah, but for this, it's really important that you have the, a reference area where you can track what's going on. Like in this case, it was a silicon substrate. Um, yeah. So you can do more, but there should be a reason why. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I just have a like comment uh, maybe here that uh, best would be not to choose one, but actually to be able to work both in Gwydion and others, which in my case is MATLAB, uh, because it's really like you have some benefits here and some benefits there, and there is no um, a single software golden solution to fit the both. And one, one thing which is missing here, when you work with polaritons, sometimes you need to do Fourier transform of the signal. And Gwydion is not even close to that. There is this Fourier filtering, but to analyze Fourier spectrum, to find the k-vector and effective mode index, uh, that's not really close. And do fitting, exponential fitting. So that's definitely something where you need to use some other softwares. But <clears throat> my, like since here there are many students, um, my uh, advice would be uh, try to learn both. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> it helps for sure. Okay. No more questions. Uh, yes. And make it so. So a suggestion that to Niaspec, it would be nice if you develop a software. Actually, it's a missing part of all your system. So just remove free there below, so make it not free and provide it with the system. So it's not free for everyone, but free for the Neaspec users. So this would be a nice solution. Very good feedback. Okay, then if there are no more questions, no more comments, one more, no? <laughs> then I think we are, we are done for today, at least for the scientific uh, tutorial sessions.